Well, that's good. We have zero people. <laughs> that's good. From Microbe TV, this is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from New York, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Vincent. How are you today? You know perfectly well how I am. I spent five hours with you and working on a grant, and I just spent 10 minutes with you filling me in on what happened since I left. <laughs> <laughs> what it all went to shit about. Yeah, so um, we know each how we're doing. We're about to send in a new grant application, so things are rather hectic. I'm also teaching, which is why... I cannot get uh, here reliably by 8, and so this is 8.30 for a while. So thank you for bearing with that. And by the way, speaking of bearing uh, with that, I would like to thank our moderators for this evening, Frank and Vanity Nutrition and Tom and Steph and Les. I think I got everyone. Appreciate your flexibility in... Um, a later hour. For some of you, it's good. For some of you, it's um, not great. I'm very sorry about that. So what shirt does Amy have? She has a black sweater and a blue shirt. Is that correct? Um, it's black sweater and it's actually very small purple polka dot. Uh, I happen to have a peach shirt, shirt which I don't think anyone cares what I wear, but I have a peach shirt tonight. In case you were interested, well, and it's it's not the world of what what shirt what ox, what button down shirt does Vincent wear. It's the world of Amy sweaters. Yeah, no, it's fine. I have no problem with that. No problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so I am teaching uh, my Columbia Virology course this week. Was the first week in person, so it's very exciting. The students are enthusiastic. It's a nice room. It's full of students. They ask great questions, and I'm I'm. Happy to be doing it in person again, although I do miss the live stream audience, but we'll do that again in the fall. So no problem with that. So exactly how is it? How do you know it's a nice room if you've been locked out of the building every day that you've gone? <laughs> so <laughs> so what do you do? Put the, the, the building up into the window and ask, is the room pretty? So since I last taught in January of 2020, they've put locks on all the doors. Previously, the whole Columbia campus, all the doors were open. Anyone could go and come and go. No guards. Now they have locks, and there's a little card reader. So yes, Monday I put my card read my ID card on, and it wouldn't open. So I followed a student in, and then I realized I had to do my attestation. You you fill out an app saying you're vaccinated, you haven't had COVID, and. Uh, that connects to your ID. So I did that today to get into the medical center. I went, put my card on, didn't open. And then right behind me was a student who was taking my course. He put his card on and it didn't open either. <laughs> so we waited for a third student, someone to come out and let us both in. So this is a ridiculous nonsense scene, which will get sorted out, but it's not, not so important. A lot of people are asking about this challenge study. And I think we should reserve a detailed analysis for Twiv, have you seen the challenge study out of the UK, uh, Amy? Oh, they have results? Yeah, let me just show them here briefly. Yeah, no. uh, I can't um, show them because... So because... Does, does this challenge study have anything to do with my grant? <clears throat> no, it has nothing to do with your grant. Okay. So you're not interested? Because no. you've been focusing on your grant. And anyway, the, uh, I, I am, the challenge study, about 38 uh, healthy young adults, uh, they're infected with 10... TCID-50s of an older uh, SARS-CoV-2. And, um, you know, none of them got seriously ill. A few of them lost smell taste. Um, but they say this shows that you can do challenge studies safely. And I think this is the biggest pile of BS in the world because you did it in 38 young, healthy people. Yeah, you're not going to see much, but maybe the next time you're going to see something. I don't know how this is ethical to even do this with a virus that can be highly lethal and which is a brand new virus to humanity and which is totally unnecessary. And I, the, all the, the results I looked at, are really nothing new in terms of onset from infection to disease symptoms, 
They don't even measure, they don't even quantify infectious virus shedding. They just do plus or minus. I, I just think they, they, well, if they're going to do it and be unethical, and yeah, I'm saying it's unethical, they should have done it right. Well, first of all, I don't think, I, I, I think we a little over exaggerated about the lethality. This is not on par with Ebola or Marburg. No, of course not. Of course not. So it's a little. Yeah, but do you argue that? Bit. Do you argue that do, this can't no, kill you? It's not. I'm not arguing that. But it's not. Uh, it's not on board with Marburg or Ebola. I just think the whole problem is that it's an unethical thing to have done. Yes. It's not but, but enhancing. Amy, it's not enhancing our understanding of anything. It's an it's unethical not. thing. It's an unethical, unnecessary set of experiments that put people in jeopardy of various other things. And there was no reason to do it. You have a, so, you have a, a, you have a world of challenge studies, go out and sit in the appropriate areas and monitor appropriately. It's all there for you. What? So I just want to remind people, they do challenge studies with rhinoviruses, which are generally pretty mild. They use influenza viruses. They use, mild strains in vaccinated people. They do it with norovirus, which just gives you puking and diarrhea for a couple of days. These are all viruses that are pretty mild. This one is not necessarily mild, all right? So I don't get it. And well, as Amy norovirus said- norovirus is not necessarily mild. You can dehydrate and die. Lots yeah, of kids just keep, dehydrate. You just keep drinking. It's an, if you're in a trial, a challenge trial, you, they just hydrate you. They can give you IV fluids if they want, but- uh, those are all situations where people are not going to die. Well, the other, like rhinovirus, we don't, do we really do challenge trials of rhinovirus still today? I thought that was done in the 70s well, and 80s. Well, it was done. I, I, th I think you would say that people lost interest, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not 100% clear how Paul Menberg thinks she's going to test her vaccine. That's a good question. Maybe they'll do Because there's no animal model. Well, there's no animal model, right? Yeah. So yeah, how yeah. are you going to demonstrate anything about before you go into a phase one? You generally have to do animal studies. So how are you going to demonstrate anything if you don't have an animal model? It's all about show, Amy. Did you know that? Apparently. All right. Thank you, H. Zoo, for your contribution to the incubator. Uh, Mary wants to know, Udell says dendritic cells present spike to B cells, which then bind spike with antibody. Why would a naive B cell have an antibody to spike? That's how it just, works. It's just because it's random and hypersomatic mutation. It's just stochastic by chance. Yeah, you can, you make, as Udell said, you can make antibodies to stuff not even known to nature, it's totally synthetic compounds and yeah because you have an incredible repertoire of antibodies that can recognize almost anything it's really amazing what is it like Absolutely. 10 to the 16th or 10 to the 30th or something huge possibilities numbers. huge yeah 10 so, to the 16th is huge it's a huge yeah, 10 number to the, 10 to the 30th is even huger <laughs> Well, thank you for is that a word? <laughs> Huge. A word? Okay, sure. <laughs> we can go with that. So I like this one. Aspie Third Eye says, I'm only 54, but I'm here because I would like to see 70. All right. Good to hear it. Um, Elena wants to know, at what age did you know you wanted to study science? For Amy also. Let, let me, let Amy, when did you know you wanted to do science, Amy? Oh, I was really young. Um, uh, let's see. I would say eight, third grade is eight. Yeah, third about third grade. Mm. Maybe maybe even younger. Yeah, somewhere between yeah somewhere between first and third grade. Um, so. I don't really know because my all right, my dad was a doctor and I thought that was the same as science. And I was interested in medicine, but I didn't know anything about careers. And then in high school, I had a great biology teacher and she got me really more interested in biology. But 
my father, of course, wanted me to go to medical school. So I went to Cornell and majored in biology and didn't really know what I could do in science and ended up graduating without anything lined up. And so I liked science a lot, but I didn't know about a career until I got a job uh, the year I graduated from college and, in a laboratory doing microbiology, and that really got me excited. And so ended up going back to grad school, but it wasn't a linear path, that's for sure. And that's fine. No. I don't I don't think it needs to be, right? No, it doesn't. I mean, their grade, you know, is really young. We took some really cool science, like we talked about really cool science stuff. I think it was the first introduction to like the different systems in the in the body. It was I was also really good in math. So like out of the entire third grade class of the school, like you had to take these 10, these one minute, 10 question quizzes of each multiplication table. And then you followed it up yeah, with yeah, division yeah. tables. And then at the end of it, you had to do a hundred questions and you could only get five wrong in five minutes. And I was the first, <laughs> I was the first one in the class to finish all of that. I'm not surprised you're brilliant. Um, and so I thought it was really cool. I liked math. I thought it was really cool. And we did some solar system shit and we did some body stuff about blood walking through it and stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, even though my parents were chemists, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't cool until like, you know, you started doing that. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, so then in fifth grade, oh yeah, I forgot my story in fifth grade when I shot the stoppers down the hallway to learn about different angles in my fifth grade physics class. And and then when my mom found out we were shooting stoppers, we made these launching pads and everything. Uh huh. She thought we were going to shoot somebody's eye out. She was not a big fan. Shoot your eye out. That's a, that's a well not, I wasn't going to shoot my eye out. Somebody else was going to shoot my eye out. All right. Um, here, listen to what Osterholm said. This pandemic won't end until we can develop an intranasal vaccine that covers every variant with 90% efficacy. So now we have to admit that he's on drugs or on oh. something. This is absurd. This is just Wait, absurd. Wait, I can't just admit that he sneezed too many times and either A, killed too many brain cells or it fell out his nose. <clears throat> Maybe his internet's not working, Amy. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going more with... He sneezed too many times and killed too many brain cells. Oh, boy, here we go. Thank you, John, for your contribution. Have you seen the UK Human Challenge trial data? So, yeah, we I just briefly... just finished discussing that. Well, well it's okay. He, he posted this question a long time ago. We'll do a deep dive on TWIV, maybe Friday. I don't know who's signed up for TWIV on Friday, actually. Um Maybe, know. you know, people have to sign up. We just don't, we just don't do it. <laughs> well, the following Friday. Friday is not a good day to do it because we're doing my paper. Three, what is Friday, the 6th of February? No. No, Friday is the 4th because Saturday is the 5th. Oh, so Brianne and Rich have signed up. Okay. Yeah, we'll do the paper on, on Friday. I was going to do the, the EBV ma um, multiple sclerosis paper. Have you seen that one, Amy? There's been several. What do you think of One them? in nature. Everybody's got EBV. I know, that's the problem, right? Hard to tease out what's... Yeah, it's yeah kind of, it falls control. along the same lines as the H... What was it? The herpes 6 and 7 with Alzheimer's? Yeah. Have you, Mike says, have you seen uh, Osterholm warning China will soon have outbreaks of severe COVID because Sinovac is not as good? No, I haven't. But now I don't listen to anything Osterholm has to say. Actually, I never did. Uh, and now he seems to be going off the, the rails. Is that how you say it? Sure. It's just or not making any sense. Whatever. I don't know what he's thinking. So AM Rosa 10 saw so Gabriel Victor on immune. Interesting that he thought three to four week dosing of mRNA wasn't a mistake and turned out to be a double prime and that the boost is a good idea. Yeah, I was interested in that too. So he views the two as a double prime. Yeah, 
just close Maybe together. Uh, that's a good question. Okay. It's just his interpretation. So it just, huh? Well, it just, no, it's just a justification of not saying that it was wrong. It's a fancy schmancy verbose way of saying while it was wrong, we have to explain it somehow. So now I'm going to say a double prime. And then if somebody were to come up to him, if you guys had asked quickly, what is a double prime? He would have said, I don't really know. Well, um, what was I going to say? He just spent a few minutes before saying you have to space out the prime boost. So I said, so is the three, four week a mistake? He said, no, no, it's just two primes. Yeah, but know. that's why do you need two primes? Yeah, I agree. Prime, I totally by agree. definition, a prime is one shot. That's what a prime is. Do you, how many primings of the pump do you do? Mm. I, I don't know, but you're right. I, I agree. Let's move on. So do you know this guy, Mark Fuscio? Yes, of course. I know Mark. Why? So he, he says, chat? this is the first time I'm joining this live session. You should promote it more on Twitch. No, we don't need to promote it more on Twitch. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I don't need Mark, any more hate. Mark, next time you're in New York, uh, come visit the incubator. Uh, we're open for business. Um, I, no, I don't. I, I don't want to promote this on Twiv. I don't know why, but Amy just confirmed it, so that's good enough for me. <laughs> right? Thank you, Hayden, yeah, for your contribution. I, I, don't wanna, I don't. I don't need input from the others. Why are vaccines good. one or a few shots? But my B venom desensitization is one shot per month for years. Happy birthday, Hayden! Very good. Do you know why, Amy? It's a different it procedure. Probably has, yeah, it probably has. Well, the other thing is it probably has to do with durability of immunity, right? Well, you know, the desensitization is so you don't have IgE produced to uh, to bee venom, for example. But, yeah, well, uh, I don't know how that, I don't know uh, how long that takes. And I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. It's a good question. I want to try and, yeah, that's good. I'll look into it. Is it possible that the reason most children seem to be fair better with virus than adults because they have less ACE2 receptors? What do you think, Amy? Um, no, because they actually get as equally infected and they actually shed more virus. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think that's an answer. Receptor is not the answer to everything. How safe is it to send a five-year-old back to school with one COVID shot? Wearing a mask. Masking and maybe testing, right? I don't Amy. care really about testing. I mean, I think if you have one COVID shot and you're in the process of vaccination and everybody is masking and the adults are all vaccinated and masking, I think it's probably fine. All right, so Bobby, much later in the chat, says, have you ever thought about doing an AMA? So I've done a multiple AMAs on Reddit. I was supposed to do them every two weeks, and then my teaching, my live stream course got in the way at 11 a.m., uh, and I'm hoping to return to it at some point, maybe next week. Stay tuned. Uh, many women complain of prolonged period after vaccination. Some even have constant bleeding for up to eight weeks. Why is that? Any ideas, Amy? I don't think anybody has an explanation, but I think it is an observation. Yes, it is. I think Daniel has mentioned that as well. How easily can COVID spread through standing air after an infected person has left, for example, in a badly ventilated apartment hallway? How long until the risk is minimal? There's no one who can answer that for you, right? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, the, the, the studies just haven't been done and they never will be done. And most of what we know is anecdotal. So although it's an interesting experiment, uh, if you're vaccinated, Edelhard, if you're vaccinated, you shouldn't worry about it, right? Right. How is the patient swab prepared before the PCR test is done? Does the envelope need to be lysed? So, Amy, when they take that swab out of the, the buffer, what do they do? They just add uh, like a chloroform phenol mixture. 
Yeah, so they put in a, a, a mixture that will extract the nucleic acids away from the and separate protein, separate them, and uh, it does break the viral envelope. Yes, right. Yeah. So that's it's a very simple Just procedure, it. right? It's very quick. It mm -hmm. has to be right because they're doing a lot of tests. Any chance less than five year old vaccine is a go due to antibody response being a bad metric? I don't quite know what that well, means. Well, the Pfizer, so they didn't, they, so Pfizer didn't see a good response, a good antibody titer in the like two and four year olds. But apparently they have filed for EUA use yesterday at the FDA. And they haven't released any press release or data about what they found when they did this. So, yeah. but the idea was, okay, so we didn't get as good a response with the dose that we thought, which was what, 1.5 milligrams or micrograms or whatever. Because mm -hmm. yeah, like what, dose, a five, yeah. yeah. So we're going to give a third boost. We're going to give a third dose and, and that'll fix the problem. But any of the, any of those data are not it's not clear they just so, filed yesterday and stuff so they made a low neutralization response is that the observation neutralization response so they have a low antibody titer defined as what occurs in the cell plate is it a binding titer or a neutralization titer? That's what I'm asking. You don't know? It's, I think there's really, a chance. They didn't, they didn't really expand. They okay. just said it, had, it was poorly immunogenic in the children. I think it's still a chance that it's a go because antibodies are not everything. And we've used antibodies to calibrate everything so far, and that may not be correct. So, well, it is. A, it doesn't matter what you think. They filed. Yeah, I understand. But John wants to know if it's a go, if it'll still work, right? And I think it could. I'm and sure it's going to work. They must think. Look, neutralization titers against Omicron in vaccinated people are pretty low, yet they're protected against severe disease. So why why not with kids? Thank you, Rob, for your. <laughs> contribution don't ignore the spore i love that mushroom the red with the white dots uh, rob wants it this week in fungi i'd have to get a fungal expert although i know some uh here's one for amy are there any resources tracking what we are learning about the functions or effects of the non-structural proteins how many are there I don't know of any resources except the publication record, right, Amy? Right. So I mean, if there are 30 proteins, membrane, spike, and envelope, and nucleic capsid are the structural. So 30 minus 4. So 26 are non-structural proteins by definition. Yeah. So among those are the polymerase, right? The, and, and ancillary factors, right? Right. Yeah, exonuclease, etc. Well, huh? the majority of the stuff we don't really know what it yeah. does. Yeah. So Moderna's HIV mRNA vaccine trial has started. Amy, any thoughts on the potential outcome? What's that? So I don't really care what the platform is. I mean, that's just the platform. Question is, what's the epitope that they're generating the antibodies against? Because yeah, if it's something that is highly glycosylated, it's not going to work. If it's something that we've already targeted, not going to work. So what is it? Hmm. MRNA 1644. So it sounds like. Well, what does it epitope. encode for? I don't know. But, but what's used, the epitope? I'm looking. 1644, though, implies that it's a single protein. How because does that imply it's a single protein? Because, and you're not going to like this, I know, <laughs> because mRNA 1273 is so called because of the length of the spike. So I'm assuming that no, it whatever just says I just that told it's you, that amount of amino acids, right, or, or yeah, nucleotides. But, yeah. 
So I don't know. It could be. Yeah, it could be anything. More than one. Yeah, I mean, I could call the mRNA vaccine against polio mRNA eight eighty one, right? Because it's the P one region is eight hundred and eighty eight eight hundred and eighty one amino acids long. It's not one protein, right? It's four. Anyway, I can't find. They say it's a single protein, but they're not saying. You know, this is the problem with the press. Unless you go to the literature, which there isn't well, any yet. To be honest with you, I have little hope for any vaccine against HIV. They've all well, that's what it I doesn't wanted. matter what the platform is. So it really has to do with the fact that it doesn't make a good immune response. It's highly glycosylated, so it's going to be hidden from many antibodies. And it alters, it escapes antibodies extraordinarily. Okay, quickly. here's the answer. Envelope and gag. So envelope is the precursor to the spike, and gag is the precursor to the structural proteins, including um, capsid and nucleocapsid. So nope. you don't think that's going to work? Nope. Okay, there you go. I have a feeling Amy is right. I know we are not mice. Some of us are. Some of us are rodents. Some of us are ferrets. But in listening to you on Immune with Dr. Victoria, should boosters be given in the same arm? Also, can boosters be separated by too long of a time period? <laughs> so Victoria had some data on the clonality of uh, the booster response. So what comes out of the – so when you have a, a shot in an arm, the local lymph nodes uh, tend to respond to that, and then the memory cells are there. And then when the memory cells come out, it's – clonal it's not a full representation of all the memory cells that are in the lymph node and when those move to other lymph nodes in the body it's a subset of what originally formed in the draining lymph node near the inoculation site so his argument is if you go in the other arm you're only going to be boosting a subset of the b cells so he said you should get it in the same arm but he said i'm not giving medical advice <laughs> what's up amy Nothing. Can boosters be separated by too long of a time period? No. Well, it depends. You know, I, the, the tetanus booster, right, is like 10 years. Yep. It's time for your 10-year booster, tetanus. <laughs> How careful do you have to be taking off and putting on a mask? Could you get infected from virus that has been filtered from the air via touching the mask or rubbing the mask on your face? I think, Amy. Never heard of it yet. Yeah, I haven't heard a single uh, example of that. Uh, what, I would you know, think probably not because a lot of physical, very small physical perturbations could uh, strip the membrane off and then you're non-infectious. Membrane so think, uh, envelope viruses are kind of delicate compared to what we, we study. Uh, Joe wants to know, if the teachers, staff, and cafeteria workers are vaccinated, why do the school children have to wear masks? Because they're going to infect themselves. Yeah, if they're not vaccinated, in other words. Right? Right. Right. So if they're, if they're under five, you don't want them to get infected, right? Well, it's not even that they have to be under five. Eighty-five percent of kids under 12 are, vac are, vac are not vaccinated. So, and what they if you have, have no have intention a, of being vaccinated. What if you have a, someone over ninety or an immunocompromised person at home? Wouldn't you want them to avoid? I don't bringing... know. You should call my cousin. He doesn't give a shit. Is he a doctor? Yeah, he's a spinal surgeon, and he refuses to vaccinate his kid. His kid refuses to get vaccinated, and they've been gallivanting around this country and to Egypt and to various other places so you call him and you and you ask him i mean they were no, just I, at a wedding in florida and apparently not, some older individuals were there so i'm not interested let me know how that works in, out for you uh, i'm not interested in talking to him he sounds like a buffoon okay however uh why do the school children have to wear masks to protect them if they're not vaccinated and that's that's my it answer. protects them from it doesn't protect them from the adults 
It protects them from their classmates that may not be vaccinated. Correct. It seems like Omicron is a dominant strain. It would be safe to assume that everyone will be vaccinated or infected and create enough immunity to make the pandemic end. So they should go listen to this guy from Harvard who comes out and tells you directly that this idea that the pandemic is going to end and the virus is going to disappear was folklore ep- epidemiology. <laughs> I like that, folklore epidemiology. I do too, except for the fact that I refuse to ever look at a pair of Birkenstocks or some pilgrimy looking plaid oriented skirt with some vest. Um. If the pandemic will end, the virus is not going away. So whoever said that, that is, what did you call it? Ep- epidemiology? Folklore epidemiology. Oh, I love that. Folklore epidemiology. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think it's enough population immunity will eventually result to, to severely in, inhibit transmission and, and disease. Yeah. And that's going to be the end of the pandemic. No problem. Of course, the fewer people are infected, the fewer variants are generated. What does that have to do with it? It's just an add-on. Oh, okay. Oh, here's an answer to the venom. Because for venomous allergens, you need to have high antibody titers. T-cell immunity isn't relevant to stop anaphylaxis. Thank you, Hayden. Wow, that's great. Well, because venom might be glycosylated, right? If it's glycosylated, then antibodies don't work. Wonderful. We have great crowdsourcing of information here. Um, Is it true that you have a lot of sweaters, Amy? Yes. Gosh. So you could go like weeks without wearing the same one? Um, yeah, probably. I could okay. probably go two or three weeks without wearing the same one. But I don't like all of them. And not all of them are equally warm. <laughs> I don't like all of them. <laughs> I don't like all of them. Not all of them are equally warm. And some of them are way too big. I, I like uh, sweaters. However, I'm, I like more... Uh, rolling up my sleeves, okay? And when I have a sweater, I can't roll up my sleeves. So this trumps wearing a sweater. I hate short sleeve shirts. I like to roll up. I don't understand why short sleeve shirts have to do with sweaters. Who would put a short sleeve shirt underneath a sweater? Nothing. I'm just saying I don't wear short sleeve shirts except T-shirts in the summertime. What is the infectious time frame to pass virus from human to human for Omicron? Well, it, it, Amy, have you seen reports that it's it's an accelerated time frame compared to other variants? That's Omicron? What saying. Yeah. I haven't seen, I thought it was Delta that was accelerated. Omicron was just because it was immune evasive. No, I haven't, I don't really follow that. So Daniel says I have a really that, hard uh, time with, I have a really hard time understanding how the intrinsic rate of the polymerase has has changed between all of these variants because we only study alterations and spike. So well, I, I have a really changed. hard. So I then I changed. don't understand how it's replicating faster. Because you're you have a rate limiting step, which is how how fast it takes to make the genome. But you would so if there that's kinetic... the same, if that's the same in all cases, then I don't understand how one you could say anything is replicating faster or reproducing but, faster. But you, you have a rate you, limiting st- step. You agree that there are, for a, a single virus, there are variants that reproduce faster or slower due to, say, mutations. It slows down replication. So you can have an accelerated replication. Why not? That's you can make more protein. In, that's usually in a tissue culture cell where we've made, we've put it under some selective pressure. That's very rare okay. in life. Anyway, so Daniel says, from the time of symptom onset, within five to seven days, you're no longer shedding okay, enough so to that's the problem. be transmitting. What? That's my problem. What is your problem? My problem is the <laughs> definition right there, symptom onset. So if, you had pre-expo- if you've been pre- uh, previously exposed or you're vaccinated, symptom onset occurs a day before because it's not due to the virus, it's due to your immune response. So you report... If it's solely due to the virus, it takes much longer. Okay. Now I understand your concerns. So I think that this hypothesis that you, uh, that 
it's a shorter time to whatever he says is not the correct interpretation because you've said on from symptom onset and that is not symptom onset due to x and symptom on is equal it's symptom onset due to x and due to y those are not two equal variables so you can't say anything uh, well perhaps this challenge study will illuminate it let me tell you what they found amy okay so they inoculated the, the volunteers with a certain amount of virus. Um, 18 of them became infected. 50, half of them, 53% became infected. Viral load peaked at five days post-inoculation. By uh, how, what, plaque assay? No, RNA. Okay, virus load didn't peak. RNA replication <laughs> might have peaked, but virus load did not peak. And they say variable virus was recovered from the nose up to 10 days on average, but they only did a yes or no recover, not a quantification of infectivity. Oh, Mild so to then, moderate. Uh, well, how do you do yes or no? You hold up the sample to your to your envelope and say, are you here? <laughs> you put the swab on cells and you see if they get infected. You don't quantify it. Right? Oh, like the guy in Wisconsin? Yes, exactly right. Uh, okay. And anyway, mild to moderate symptoms were reported by 89% beginning two to four days post inoculation. So these are all vaccine negative people. No That's evidence fine. of infection or so this is the kinetics in the absence. You can't of, say that everybody but you can't say that so while they got exposed, maybe at the same time you cannot say that they got infected at exactly the same time. That could explain the two to four days, right? Sure, it could you be and your... I sit in the same room, and eventually you and I will all test positive. But whether or not you and I got infected on the same day at the same minute is not clear. Yes, I agree. Okay. So, but I also think your immune response can influence it. So it's it's very complicated, don't you think? Right. It's kind so of like again, immunology. It's very complicated. <laughs> yeah, that's what they keep telling me when they just hit the fax machine again, and they. <laughs> You know, viruses, they're very complicated. So are you. Exactly. So is my brownie recipe. So, you know. Is it complicated? Very complicated. Really? No, I was being sarcastic. It's not okay. complicated. Thank you, Pamela, for your contribution. Really appreciate your support of the incubator. Okay. At 9.15, I have to go play out my helos. Okay. We thank you always for coming. My pleasure. Uh, what mask are you wearing? Wearing um, no mask. No, to teach, to teach. <laughs> I have to wear a mask on campus. It has to be a surgical or an N95 or a KN95. Anything but cloth. Anything but cloth. But I don't really like the surgical masks. They're not well fitting. So we have some KNs uh, that I think I will wear. They're black. That's pretty good. I like that because the, 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 the blue surgical masks are ridiculous. But that's what Amy wears. Would you let an unvaccinated person come to your house for dinner? Would, for dinner about... at my house where yes. I'm sitting and eating? Yes. No. No. Why? I Why not? Just I'm just curious. Are you afraid um, to be infected? No. I'm no. I just I I just would I don't know why I wouldn't. I just, <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I guess that they're, it would be fine for them. If they're willing to take that risk, it's fine for them. Yeah, sure, fine. They could, they could well, come. If, I if mean, I don't really know. Any, I wouldn't really hang out with my cousin, you know. But that's I don't, a I would, uh, I don't know anyone who would not be vaccinated. And so you're talking about a stranger coming to dinner. No, a stranger's not coming to dinner, no. And, and, but anyway, before, if someone, if one of you said, hey, I'm going to be in scotch tape and can I come to your house for dinner? So you're vaccinated and you say, no, why not? Why aren't you vaccinated? What's the problem? And I'd get in a conversation with them because I would prefer not to have them uh, unvaccinated. I don't, I don't actually care if they're in my home unvaccinated, well, but it's not just about me. I have four other people in my home, so it's not. I can't make a decision without them. One of them would certainly say no, and that would be the end of it. Well, all me, of them have been vaccinated and infected. Everybody's been infected. 
what was the name of the study from Canada that convinced you to get a booster? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't remember. It's on a TWIV some time ago. A few episodes before the Paul Offit episode. I can find it right now. Let's look. Microbe.tv slash TWIV. That's what the internet is for. That's hysterical. Right? What is? Uh, sure. Mark Craven's mother bought 30 of Evolve Together masks because Sarah Jessica Parker likes them. And that's hysterical. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I would only, I, I won't even buy shoes just because Sarah Jessica Parker likes them and she has her own shoe line. You don't like Sarah Jessica Parker? I'm not saying, not that I do. I don't, I don't necessarily need style advice from Sarah Jessica Parker, but she's fine. Uh, let's look one more page before I stop looking and I can't find the episode here. Oh, here, the impact of vaccination. I think it was... Um, hmm. I don't remember. Sorry. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Sorry, Mr. Derpity Derp. Maybe someone on the um, stream can find it for you. Are people back in lab working in New York? Yeah, they've been for a while. Yeah. Um, Amy's been back pretty much the whole time, right? What do you mean pretty much the whole time? I never left. Okay, I'm sorry if I pr speak slightly incorrectly. Uh, <laughs> I was you know, just that's, that's a kiss of death. Well, I'm getting that my booster a... tomorrow, but I will have a choice between Moderna and Pfizer. I got two Modernas. Which one should I go for? I don't think it matters. Nope. I didn't have a choice. You know, I got two Modernas, and I said, we don't have any Moderna now, so I got Pfizer. It doesn't matter. Oh, we still have for two head? <laughs> no, you still have to take your temp where I work. Like, that's going to help. No, no, it doesn't help. Boy, they tried to do that with Amy a year ago, and boy, did she get mad. Remember? Yeah, I do. It's totally ridiculous. Well, you know, the the security guard had to do it. It wasn't his fault, but they had a gun, and they kept pointing it at her forehead, and it was too low because it was cold I out. I have very right? low, but yeah, but I also, like, first of all, my body temperature normally is like 96. And then when we came in from the weather, it was like minus two outside. And then it drops into the beneath the level of detection. And the guy's like sitting there. And I'm like, well, and he's like grabbing my hand. He's like, you don't know how to do it, lady. And I'm like sitting there. I'm like, okay, fine. You do it. Mm. Uh, did you see Southern California study with Omicron? Way less harmful than the flu. Well, I don't. I didn't see it. But you have to be very careful because if you're just looking at vaccinated people, yeah, of course it's going to be way less harmful. And so Daniel Griffin says he sees a lot of patients who are unvaccinated and infected with Omicron, and they get pretty serious disease. So I don't know where that's coming from, if it's population dependent. I think you have to be really careful. Uh, thank you for your contributions. Hey, two PharmDs in San Francisco. What is Neocov? You know what that is, uh, Amy? This virus in bats? Do you hear about it? I think it's like the MERS-related virus, that, a, bat, a bat paper that I sent you earlier last week or yeah. something. Um, so Sounds what, really is, cool because it also uses ACE2, which is not the MERS receptor. No, but is it highly related to MERS? Well, it's called the MERS-like bat virus. So, yeah, it's highly related to MERS. So they think this is what went into camels first? I don't know. I haven't read the paper. I'm okay. writing a grant. Is it published? Yeah, I sent you the paper last week. I texted you the paper last week. Vincent, are you aware of truckers protesting vaccine mandates in Canada? Uh, I'm not, I know that there are protests everywhere. It's unfortunate. Um, I, I just don't know what... What is the issue? They just don't want to be told what to do. But why not make an exception if it helps you, everybody? I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Inborn errors of interferon. This is a great quote. I like that too, but it's true. 
No, you cannot guarantee responses because humans are a very diverse population. We're not all the same. Right, Amy? No. I, well, two more questions and then I have to go play it out my heels. Will Lori Gare have a show or did you just mention it hypothetically? No, she's going to have a show. You guys are in discussion. I had a talk with her and, and she said she would think about it. So now Amy tells me I have to follow up. I have yes. to follow up. What, what is this follow up and quote shit? You have to call her and you have to say, let's sit down and discuss all of your concerns and let's work it out. I don't know what this follow up and quote crap is. I just don't like the phrase follow up. That's all. You just Fine. do what you what have do you to want? do. What do you want? Well, do what you have to do. You haven't done it yet. So just do it. Yeah, I know. But I thought I'd give her just some do time. It. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to hear any more oh, okay. excuses. Okay. Okay. It's been like a month, so let's just do it and call it a day. Priscilla, thank you time. so much for bringing that up. <laughs> you you spend more time giving me excuses than it would cost to actually just send her an email saying let's let's talk again about and discuss your your concerns and resolve the issue. Is it worth mixing Novavax and an mRNA vaccine for better T and B cell coverage? Is it dangerous know. or just useless to boost before five six months? All right, so two it's, parts. I think it's fine to mix. Sure, yes. you can justify it any way you want. That's fine with me. I don't really care. And um, the last one, it doesn't. It there's no point in shortening the time span between the boost. Okay. Are you done, or you want more? Um, oh, it's nine. Yeah, I'm done. I have to go play it out my heels. Okay, right. Amy, thank you. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow after I have my breakdown. Or... <laughs> Is this your daily breakdown? <laughs> yeah, it's my daily breakdown. Between two and four is a daily breakdown, and then I'll talk to you at 4.30 after as I recover. <laughs> okay, take care. All right. Thank Bye. you, Amy. Bye-bye. Um, what are your thoughts on the recent MMWR showing infection acquired immunity being better at reducing hospitalization? So I, I think you have to be careful about these studies it, because they can be influenced by the population. I have no doubt that infection can induce good immunity. And if Amy were here, she would agree some people say that it's heterogeneous, but that doesn't make any sense because so is vaccine-induced immunity. We don't distinguish between va vaccine and infection-induced immu immunity for other infections. So I think at some point we have to wrestle with that, right? Take care of it. I agree. Uh, okay, so this is referring to the challenge study again. Aren't they worried about getting long COVID? Well, that's another great issue, right? You don't have to have serious infection to have long COVID. And so what are they thinking? I just don't get it. And what are the 38 people who signed up, right? Why don't they talk to someone with long COVID and maybe think twice about it? I'm telling you, if they keep repeating these challenge studies, which I'm sure they want to do, they're going to have an issue at some point. Someone's going to get harmed, and then that's going to, have, that's going to be trouble. And no CT values, right? No infectious titration, just plus or minus infectivity. Why don't they do the damn thing right? Ay ay ay. And the people doing it, what's the problem? Yeah, they they justify it in their own ways, but I'm sorry. Not right. Thank you, ditching the grind for your contribution. Really appreciate it. How did the challenge study get path and ethics review? It did. It's a different it's the UK. It's a different review from from anywhere else, right? Um they they said, yeah, it's a small number of young, healthy people, and we're going to give them a fixed amount of virus, and we're going to have you know, them in a place where we can take care of them if things go wrong. I'm sorry. None of that convinces me. It's not like I haven't thought about this. I don't get it. Uh, the Army is announcing they are have developed a vaccine that will work on every type of SARS and will share with the world. Have you heard about this? Sure. The papers are all out there. It's been widely published for sure. They have a protein-based 
vaccine that induces pretty broad immune immunity, but it's not very different from a broad immunity you get after, say, three well-spaced out doses of an mRNA vaccine. So I, I think it's fine, but I'm not sure what's going to happen because I asked John Mascola, who's the head of the Vaccine Research Institute, a couple of weeks ago. I said, do you know of any more vaccines in the U.S. that are likely to be licensed? And he said, no, aside from Novavax and Sanofi, that's it. He didn't mention the Army. So that's all I know. I don't think, well, maybe they want it for, for Army personnel, right, or military. That's great. Or maybe countries where they're deployed and they want to protect the people, et cetera. That's fine. But the numbers are fine. I, I think it looks good, but I'm not sure it's better than any other vaccine. Challenge studies could have meant vaccines a month earlier and saved hundreds of thousands of lives. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. The, cha the vaccine studies were already very quick. This wouldn't have been better because why? They couldn't have done 40,000 challenge studies. Okay. No way. And that's what they did for each of the vaccines. I heard that the COVID testing line is a great place to get COVID. Well, it used to be for sure. I don't know if it still is. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, how, are there any viruses of animals that are able to gain cell entry without relying on a fairly specific binding site? Are there any with an assortment of sites? Well, um, two questions. There, so, so Ebola virus doesn't seem to have a specific cell plasma membrane receptor. It seems to bind. It's not even clear what it's binding and gets taken up by uh, a, a Pinocytosis, which is a, a me cell mechanism for taking up small molecules, not endocytosis. That's the only one I know of. All the others have a specific receptor. Uh, do they use an assortment of sites? So some viruses use multiple receptors. Some viruses bind to multiple receptors for sure. Uh, the herpes viruses, for example. Herpes simplex can interact with a number of receptors. Uh, retroviruses interact with 16 different receptors. So there's quite a wide range of scenarios for sure. If they did PCR or whatever for, for polio, would we see infection even with no disease? Yeah, they would. In fact, if you did it for any virus that we vaccinate against, I'm sure you would see some, right? Because most, in fact, most vaccines do not prevent infection. So we don't do this widespread testing for any other virus, except maybe influenza, maybe a second um, but that's usually when you feel badly and you go and you get a test, right? So I'm sure if we tested the U.S. for polio or any country, we'd find it. We'd find virus in the sewage. We'd find it in the stool. So all these studies now, for example, where they're looking for virus in um, sewage, right, wastewater, SARS-CoV-2 anyway, why don't they look for other viruses, especially the, yeah, Polio, anything that you could swallow and excrete, measles even, even though it's a respiratory virus. They have the samples. Why not look for it? I mean, that's, I don't understand why you wouldn't do it, right? It's so interesting. Dr. Barker's lectures mean mention how we all have antibodies to Ebola right now? Seriously? No, that cannot be. We don't all have antibodies. Oh, I see what she means. She means that we all have, <laughs> yes, you have a, a B cell with a surface, not antibodies, but B cell receptors, which are antibodies attached to B cells that could recognize Ebola virus if it got in you. Yes, I totally get that. Um, but there are not a lot of them. Because only when they encounter the actual virus or the antigen from the virus do they expand. Yes. So you got in. You have antibodies to anything, including things that are not in nature, totally synthetic compounds. You have antibodies to. What's this stuff about Vimentin? <laughs> this reminds me of Saturday Night Live. What's all this about 
euthanasia, right? What's this stuff about Vimentin as an intermediate target? So let's look it up. Vimentin, <laughs> SARS-CoV-2. So Vimentin is a, is a protein that's a component as, of, an intermediate, of intermediate filaments, right? And here's the paper, right? First hit in Google. It's a paper in BioArchive. Well, it's not a paper. It's a preprint. Extracellular Vimentin is a target against SARS-CoV-2 host cell invasion. Extracellular. Huh. So SARS-CoV-2 aces the receptor. Um, so they say Vimentin is an intermediate filament protein that is on the extracellular surface of a subset of cells where it combined to and facilitate pathogen uptake. Here we present evidence that extracellular Vimentin might act as a critical component of the spike ACE2 complex in mediating entry. We demonstrate direct binding between Vimentin and SARS-CoV-2 and show antibodies against Vimentin block in vitro pseudovirus infection. So in vitro and cells and culture in the lab, it may be involved, Vimentin may be involved in uh, entry, but you got to look in, the, in people, right, and see if it's physiologically relevant because it could happen in cells and culture and absolutely not happen in people. So that's what I think about that. Set Day said on TWIV in his own study that mutations were random in affecting T cells. He recently retweeted Bertoletti lab study indicating that they may be selective. All right, so, uh, so obviously he's tweeting something that is contrary to what he found, right? So he feels that they are random because mutations are random and if there's no selection, they're going to remain random in the protein. So another lab has found something different. Um, I haven't seen it, so I, I can't really come, but I'm not surprised because it depends uh, what you're looking at. So until I saw it, I, I really can't say what it, why it is that they differ. Florian Kramer is recruiting people for an egg-based vaccine challenge. An egg-based vaccine against what? I'm assuming since you don't mention the virus, is it SARS-CoV-2? Why? Why would you? Oh, I know. It's Newcastle disease virus vectored SARS-CoV-2. Yeah. Okay. Good luck with that. People are trying to move away from eggs. Why would you do that? Why is it better than what we have? Don't get it. Um, thank you, Kent, for your contribution. I really appreciate it. We, we love the support of the incubator. I would guess that the average age of us Twivers is 63. Hmm. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's probably not. It's probably younger. <laughs> Huger. Could I increase the size of the font? I did. Is it okay? All right, answer right now. You have 30 seconds so I can see it in the live chat because what I'm answering from is not the live chat. It's somewhat live. It's <laughs> it's like virus. It's not alive. Uh, is there... Good data on protection from serious disease from prior infection compared to vaccination. Yes, as you heard earlier, there's an MMWR on that, which suggests that um, there is very good protection, whether it's better than vaccination. It's not clear. It could be because the font is fine. Thank you. Um, it could be that because uh, infection gives you many more viral proteins than just spike, right? So it is possible. But then... Um, uh, we don't know if how well the infection proceeded to stimulate immunity and so forth, right? We're putting a bolus of, anti of mRNA or antigen in your arm. We know it's a fixed amount. We're putting there with the virus. We just don't know. So there are variables that differ for both. One of the experiments I did as a young kid was transforming bacteria with GFP in my room. Wow, that is quite advanced. Someone and someone as part of the other, earlier question asked me, you know, is there were there any things I did? You know, I used to do, try and do sciency things. Um, <laughs> I had a book on experiments you can do in your backyard. I love that book. 
And I have to say, once I caught, I think it was a spider, and I froze it, and I wanted to see if it would come back to life. No, it didn't. It didn't come back to life. I mean, as I thought, the, the legs moved, right, because they were thawing. And I said, ah, it worked. But then it never moved again. So I had that experimental approach back then. If you could be part of the immune system, what component would you want to be? Wow, that's a tough question. So the, the immunologists all want to be some kind of a cell. I don't know. I think I'd like to be innate immunity because you're there first. You get first crack. Innate immunity. Of interferons. Can you please explain how two elderly people with similar vaccination status in the same household, one gets pretty bad COVID, the other never even tests positive or has symptoms? A lot of potential uh, explanations for that. Uh, one is that, well, first of all, people are genetically very different, and the one person may have a great immune system, which is genetic, and uh, the other may have deficiencies of, of sorts. Um, I don't know where they got infected, right? So they could have been infected somewhere else. In two different, the, the one could have been infected out, out, out of the house. And not everyone transmits. So even though they're in the same house, so the one infected person may not have been a transmitter, may not have shed enough infectious virus to transmit, so the other person was not infected. So I'm not surprised at all at that. I hear that all the time, absolutely. SARS-CoV-2 binds to ACE2. How many other receptors are there? How likely is it for a virus to mutate to use a different receptor? Uh, how many other receptors for viruses in general? Uh, there are many. I mean, there. first of all, there are not that many cell surface proteins, right, between 1 and 2,000. So 1 and 2,000 different cell surface proteins. So it's not a huge number. And viruses sample most of those. Um, you know, we know a lot of receptors for viruses. Um, I, w I would say we know hundreds, but there are more to be identified for sure. How likely is it to mutate? Very unlikely. I haven't seen that happen to use a different receptor. It's not easy to do a completely different receptor because let's say if you're attaching to a receptor via a spike, there's an interface between the spike and the receptor. And then to go to a different receptor, you have to change that. It's hard to do without losing steam right you might start to change and then you lose the ability to bind your your receptor and you can't reproduce you're not fit and you're going and you're dead dead in the water used as a metaphor not literally so i think it's very hard to do that i tested positive ct 28 and 20 on two different tests i'm vaccinated only have mild symptoms does low CT mean I am very contagious? No, not necessarily. Remember from the Swiss study, there's a poor correlation between um, RNA copy number and infectivity. I mean, the idea is that in general, low CTs correlate with infectivity. That's how you know. That's how we should have been quarantining or isolating people, right? Not if you have a CT over 30, you're, you're not at all likely to be infectious. So as the CT drops, the likelihood that you're shedding infectious virus goes up, right? But if you are, so if you're vaccinated, the likelihood that you're going to transmit is much reduced, but it's also reduced in time for a shorter period of time. So you might be contagious for a day or two as opposed to five to seven days. That's how I look at it. Hard to know, right? Uh, you ha you uh, must do Rogan and calm the waters. No one else can do it. It's important. You need not believe me. Just ask Lex Friedman who you already know. If you do, be prepared about my carditis. Look, I've said for months I'd be happy to do it. He's not going to ask me because he wants controversy that feeds his ratings, and I am not controversy. 
I just tell the truth and his audience doesn't want it. So he will never ask me. It's fine. But if he did, I'd go. I have no problem with myocarditis. Yeah, so the vaccines may cause myocarditis. The rate is low, but it's completely treatable. And it's far lower than myocarditis from COVID. And if, if he says, well, I got COVID and I didn't get myocarditis, I says, so what? What does that mean? Your, your experience is irrelevant. It's the population experience that matters. And I'm not sure I'm the only one that can do it. All right. There are other people who can do it, although you, you shouldn't get Osterholm because Osterholm will be BSing and spewing more nonsense. Right. So anyway. Uh, I think it's ironic that Vincent told us the Gates Foundation declined funding polio and certain recording stars dro- stopped streaming their music and people are saying they had polio. Well, we're trying again. I mean, they said we're not funding polio right now because we're busy with COVID. But now they said, okay, we'll consider it again. So hopefully in the next few months we can get some money from them to do Amy's project, which is really or part of partly to do Amy's project. Actually, it's help make a, a better uh, inactivated polio vaccine. You wanted to be an astronaut, then you took physics. You have to take physics to be an astronaut. So um, Kate Rubens is a virologist, and I'm sure she didn't take a lot of physics, but then she became an astronaut. So maybe that's the path, become a virologist and then become an astronaut. Hold on a sec. Let me Let me check something here. All right, the next question here is, um, here, where is it? Is there, is there, there's a big push to get COVAX in here, and I hear the FDA has been sitting on the application for weeks. Can you explain what would make COVAX in a game changer? I don't know why it would be. I mean, you, Russia, just because someone says something doesn't mean it makes any sense. It wouldn't be a game changer, okay? Because we already have vaccines that work and enough people won't take them to blunt their effects, right? They're not going to take Covaxin. Covaxin is virus, which has grown up in cells and culture and inactivated, okay? So it's inactivated virus, like the inactivated polio virus vaccine. And there are many other inactivated viruses at all. So it's easy to develop. It's easy to deploy. You have to inject it, okay? Uh, it had, it had uh, pretty good phase two and three results. So 78% efficacy against symptomatic COVID. And severe COVID, 93% efficacy. It's now better than any of the U.S or other vaccines. So I'm not sure why it would be a game changer. I fail to understand that. Maybe I'm just thick, but I don't get it. Thank you, Patricia, for your contribution to the incubator. Paul Offit has already addressed myocarditis, yes, but maybe Offit needs to go on Rogan. Although I have to say, I like Paul Offit very much. I'm not sure he has the broad basic virology background that might be needed, but he certainly can hit the vaccine story. So I think he ought to have him on. Yeah. It would be cool. I wanted, Bobby wanted to be a train engineer and drive trains. I I think driving trains might be fun, but I want to do other things. So I wouldn't be able to do them, but I think starting and stopping would be fun. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now that things are slowly getting back to normal, I wonder how soon before the next scary variant is publicized. Well, there's, you know, there are already variants, derivatives of Omicron that seem to be displacing Omicron. There's not much made about that, is there? You'll find something. That's why we're still doing these live streams. We have 900 people, right? Because there's always something.
<clears throat> how are, are you guys weathering the storm? What storm? You mean the, the weather or the pandemic? Well, so <coughs> Amy's got issues with grants and funding, and so she is completely stressed by that. I'm okay. I just have a lot of podcasting related things to do, but I'm fine. I have no problem. Um, getting this little company going is is challenging, right? And um, I, I really need to get better at delegating. I'm not so great at that. I do it to some extent, but um, I should do it more, and that would help a lot, right? Evening from Sweden. It's a weekly tradition to watch this 2.30 a.m. each week. Week. I'm amazed that you, you're up at 2.30 a.m. to watch anything. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I don't... Personally, I'd, I would not like to listen to myself. I'd listen to Amy, but, but thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you think it's useful. I mean, as I've said many times, the only thing I want to do is teach people. Nothing else matters. And... Um, I'm not interested in money or in or fame or enrichment. I just want to teach people. It gives me great pleasure to teach my class, to do my live streams, to do this, to do the pods. I have found something that's just incomparable. It's just great. Now, that's right. Today is Groundhog Day, right? February 2nd. Hmm. Here's Mark again. I just want to say, hey, Mark. Hi. Mark is a friend from California. I, I don't... It's different from TWIV. I don't know why. I, you're, you're right. I should promote it. I should tweet it. I should do a lot of things. But I think it's fine. I mean, we have way more questions than I can answer. All right. So you may say, well, more people should learn from the answers. That's probably true. Um, but I, I know you probably didn't know, but you're a big TWIV listener and you didn't know about it. It should be publicized yeah i i maybe should do that i didn't even um i've never even made it a pick of the week right thank you dr for your contribution given there are 160 rhino viruses we must all be naive to some and become ill to those we are naive to the vast majority won't become gravely ill from rhino that they have seen what makes these less virulent than sarbeco So that's a good point. So you're a lot, we are naive to a lot of rhinoviruses that we've never seen. That is a, f a function of where the virus reproduces, what it does to cells, what how the immune se system responds, right? Every virus is different in that matter. It's a, it's a question of viral virulence. How good is a virus at inducing disease? And some are really good. Some have a lot of help from the immune system, right? Like... SARS-CoV-2. Uh, some do a lot of it on their own, like Ebola viruses. I, I mean, polio is pretty much benign and, and benign, and 99% of people who are infected, it's just 1% who get paralyzed. It's an accident. So I think the, um, the virus explains it for rhinovirus pretty much. Uh, and SARS-CoV-2, SARS Sarbeco viruses uh, just have a different interaction with the host. What it is, we don't know. I mean... I don't think anyone really understands that. And it's very hard to compare different viruses like that. Could many new variants come out of China once many Chinese citizens become infected with SARS-CoV-2 when the zero COVID policy fails? Well, it depends. I mean, they're, they've got numbers pretty low, right? And that's how you keep variants low. But if they do have lots of infections, so they still have Delta there, right? Which is telling me that they don't have a lot of infection because the opportunity for Omicron to arrive hasn't uh, happened. So, sure, if something happens to allow more infections there, then the variant uh, evolution could increase. But I think they're pretty draconian, and they will keep it down. They'll clamp down right away, right? If I had gotten... If I have gotten two shots of Janssen and want a third booster, uh, what should I get? I think you ought to get an mRNA vaccine, throw in the mix. I think that they provide different, slightly different immunity from Janssen. <laughs> okay, so 
the clinical course of Omicron for the unvaccinated. We had a discussion with Amy earlier, and she disagreed with me because Daniel thinks that there's a, sh a shorter time to symptom onset. But I really think the data are thin. Um, I think it's it's similar to previous variants, frankly, from what I have seen so far. I'm still learning. I have Hashimoto's, and I'm wondering if I can rest for that. It would be a Hashimoto's trick. I don't know. But EBV, once you have it, you always have it. I don't know anything. I don't really don't know much about Hashimoto's. I'm sorry. It's not a viral thing, I'm sure. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? Hashimoto's chronic thyroiditis, right, an autoimmune disease. You got it. At least I got that part. Studies out on Omicron not inducing long-term immunity and more frequent reinfections more likely puts a damper on hopes of long-term immunity in milder cases. No, I don't think so. When you think of it, when you think of it, it is um, that it, it's exactly where common cold coronaviruses have gone, right? Uh, they are infecting many people. Immunity doesn't last very long, so you get reinfected, you get mild infections. Um, I think this is likely where SARS-CoV-2 is headed, and the the reason we are that we are seeing um, more severity in older people is because they are not immune because normally in the next generation you're going to have immunity from your early years and so that's going to prevent severe disease. So I don't think this virus will change it. I think in terms of virulence, I think it will just be a function of population immunity that changes it to a common cold coronavirus. So I, I don't think that's a bad thing because it's not going to be, it's not going anywhere. It's not going away. Is the T-cell and mitochondrial enhancing effects of DEX the only reason it's clinically effective? No, my understanding is it is the immunosuppressive effect. When given at the right time in infection, it damps down the inflammatory phase of the disease, right? That's always what Daniel is saying. What's an under-researched area of SARS-CoV-2? Well, um... All of these non-structural proteins someone brought up earlier, we don't know how changes in them, and they have a lot of changes in the variants. What do they do? Everybody focuses on spike changes. We have no idea what the other changes do. And I really want to know what, how the variants are behaving in cells and culture in the lab and relevant cells and culture and in animals because you can't conclude everything from what you're observing in epidemiology, epidemiologically in people. Anyway, just to bring this up again, I, I do. I used to do AMAs. I'm actually set up to be able to schedule them myself. They may be like a, a mini uh, moderator or whatever it's called, so I could do another one, and I'd love to. Um, the problem is, let's see, what is the problem? Uh, let's see, so Wednesdays is a good day. Today was uh, grand. So next Wednesday, I could do it. Let me put it on the calendar. Let me put AMA, Reddit time should I do it? Because Wednesday mornings are, are open. I'm usually at the incubator and I am, uh, you know, doing things, incubator-like things, and then I have class in the afternoon. So a noon, a noon Reddit, that might be cool. All right, thank you. Thank you for reminding. Oh, Astor Home has already been on Rogan? Too bad, see? Rogan thinks he's covered the experts. That's not, and he doesn't need to do any more. Would a PCR that differentiates positive and negative RNA be useful to determine infection and exposure? You, you always um, can differentiate. Yes, a negative strand RNA is one way to do it, but it's difficult to do. My understanding is it's difficult to do, and. Um, so nobody does it. But uh, that would help to show infection, actual reproduction versus exposure. Yes, absolutely. 
what kind of virologist would you consider yourselves? Do you work more on the level of biochemistry or molecular biology, cell biology? <sighs> molecular biology, cell biology. So we study uh, viruses. Uh, we we interested in immune responses to them, the antigenic structure of viruses. We're interested in how, what makes them virulent, what controls it, the genetic regulation of virulence. So I don't think it's biochemistry. No, it's just molecular biology, cell biology. Do the shots stop transmission? Why do you answer your question? Oh, you're just saying, I didn't think so. So they don't stop. Not, nothing stops, right? But they reduce it. They reduce the the amount of shedding infectious fires and the duration. And so that cuts down substantially. And if enough people are vaccinated, then it's really hard to maintain chains of infection. It doesn't have to be zero. It can just be reduced. And that's certainly what the vaccines do, for sure. Everywhere I turn to people are saying Omicron is on a decline. Is that true or are people not testing as they were? Well, I think that's part of it. I think, though... There's a, um, a peak and a decline always when there's an outbreak because the virus exhausts its susceptibles. So that's part of it. We had the holiday get together and boom, and now it's been exhausted. Immunity contributes to it. Less testing. Yes, it all contributes to it. And now when will the next peak be considering you know, the same level of immunity from vaccination and maybe infection has increased slightly. Uh, maybe in the spring when people start, no, oh, not the spring, the beginning of the summer, end of spring, right? School's over, people are moving around, starting to hang out. Maybe that'll be another one. Apparently there's a TWIV subreddit. Interesting. I didn't know that. Good. <laughs> Have you seen a paper by Weinberger about therapeutic interfering particles? Yes. In fact, you should you should ask Amy about that next time because uh, she knows about that quite well. We don't think it's very useful, but I, I don't want to go into it any more than that. What's the status of the Hotez vaccine rollout? No, I don't know. I really don't know, but that's another one where I'm not impressed Um, because they're they're using antibody levels as a protection. They're not looking at protection against disease. Am I safe driving for Uber? Double masked, three vaccines. Amy, you should be on curb. LD would love you. I don't know what that is, but. I think you're fine if you're masking and, and vaccinated. I think you're okay. Yeah, I know it's a higher risk because you have different people in the car all the time. But I think that vaccines let us get back to living. Now, remember, they're not 100%. They're not 100% and vaccinated people can die. But um, if you're, I think stay masked with a good N95 and the vaccine and that is good. Oh, you guys lower my blood pressure better than drugs. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Did you see the January Hopkins report that lockdowns do not prevent deaths? They do, however, reduce cases so as not to crush our hospitals. You know why they wouldn't reduce deaths, right? Because if they're reducing cases, that should reduce deaths. So it doesn't. it's not completely intuitive to me why that would be. Um. I don't, you know, there are always problems with these sorts of studies, potential problems, so you have to keep that in mind. It just not may not be right. Microbe TV is $80 from its monthly goal. So my, I had a monthly goal of 5000 and I said I would live stream. I got to take that goal off. My gosh. Because, why? Because my colleagues don't want to be live streamed. <laughs> they want to do it on, without people... Uh, hearing them in that way that we could, I don't edit much. I have to say, I edit when Dixon falls asleep because I think it's highly, I know he's he's old and has some health issues, but I, 
don't, I don't think you guys should see Dixon falling asleep. I shouldn't even tell you he does fall asleep, but I take that out. And, and occasionally, it's very rare, we have had some words that I don't want in there. So I was actually going to bring this up with them because I feel I set the goal and I should honor it, but um, I don't know what to do. Give me some advice. You know, a live stream can be very distracting because you can't, Nels and I, we, we can do it with two people, but I'm not sure that they can do it. With my expertise in viruses, here's how we can live with COVID, tweeted by a dermatologist. Yeah, stay in your lane. Well, I, you know, a dermatologist could have a subspecialty in virology. Not likely, but what expertise? <laughs> you should find out what it is. That's the problem with Twitter, right? Anybody could be an expert. Yeah, I could be an expert, and you, but you can go find it. You can go look me up. I'm all over the place. Uh, you can find my credentials. So most people, you can't. Have you seen the Nature paper about PRMs? Not antibodies, but probably antibody proxies. No, I haven't seen it. I will take a look for sure. Discord would be another great platform. So I set up a, a micro TV Discord channel and I do want it to make a community there. But like everything else, oh yeah, yeah, I I have to I have to get around to it, but I think that's a great idea. I mean, that was over a month, a year ago that I set that up, and I haven't gone back. If anyone knows Discord and would like to help out, please email me, and we can talk about it. Vincent at microbe TV. I mean, I also want to make a TikTok channel and put little clips of videos there to try and attract some people, uh, but I can't do it all myself. I mean, just the volume of email is is amazing. And I can't answer it all. I can't even mail out the textbooks on a timely basis for people who have contributed. I mean, it'll happen, but I, I don't want to complain. This is all great, but I have to enlist help. And that's the purpose of your donations and the incubator and so forth. So it will happen at some point. Um Gribbler says uh, vaccination was associated with lower infectious titers and faster clearance for Delta. Yes, exactly what I'm saying. The showing that vaccination would lower transmission risk. This is what we have felt all along, and the data are starting to come out to show that. Yeah. When are you going to launch a TWIV swag store? Well, there already is, men, is one, right? Um, it is, uh, let me put it on the screen. What is it? Cafepress.com slash TWIV. All right, so here we go. Cafepress.com slash TWIV. You can buy all kinds of stuff there. It's been there for a long time. And, and we make very little money. We make, I think, a dollar per item. But the point of it is to get uh, TWIV stuff out there so that people wear it and then other people say, oh, I want one of those, right? Uh, some immunologists have been claiming that T cells do not confer any protection against severe disease from COVID due to dysregulation. I think that that is incorrect. There's plenty of, of evidence. And I know a lot of, a lot of people who are actually B cell immunologists have told me there's no evidence that T cells play any role. Okay. So tell me, how is it possible that if neutralizing titers against Omicron drop really low, you're still protected against severe disease. All right, so maybe some of those, uh, maybe there are lots of non-neutralizing antibodies that are protective. Totally plausible, and, and Alessandro said they agreed. And maybe the T cells. We know that T cells, and yes, it has not been experimentally proven. I totally agree with that. But it's either a non-neutralizing antibody interacting with, say, a, a natural killer cell or some other kind of FC receptor bearing cell or T cells. And the fact that the majority of T cell epitopes remain intact in all the variants is further evidence that it's the T cells that are protecting us against severe disease. So I, I don't I don't agree with they do not confer protection. Uh, 
Um, yes, nine out of ten people admitted in hospitals for COVID are not vaccinated. That remains the fact. No question about that. I had to get a PCR last week prior to a dental appointment. Interesting. Well, I've been to dentists multiple times, twice I think now since the pandemic, and they don't have to do that. And they didn't even require vaccination. They just uh, made they had you mask and and uh, <laughs> mouthwash before they did their thing. And I'm sure they're vaxxed and they are masked up as well. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So the the Twiv mug, I have one too. Right. This this is not actually Cafe Press. This was another company I tried out, which I didn't pursue because if you put this in the dishwasher, all this stuff comes off. The print comes off. Not good. But it had a nice purple interior, and I like the shape. Right. It's a good shape for a mug. And it's got a it's got a purple handle. Right. But the company didn't pan out. They sucked. That's too bad. How likely is a revolution in foundation virology paradigm with this unprecedented amount of research and knowledge creation? Uh, not likely. I think um, a lot of the work has not been rigorous because it's done too quickly and people think, oh, we need to get this done fast. But really the main – look, you made vaccines and that's what's changed the picture here and not much else has made an impact. We are finding out things about immune responses that we didn't know because of the sheer number of infections and the samples that we have and so forth, and that's great. But I don't think a revolution is part of it. I mean, we knew pandemics could have a big impact, so we knew that from 1918, and that was just forgotten. And so now we've had another one with even in modern times we have a big impact, right? So that is... uh, That is uh, one of the outcomes, I think. But scientifically, I think we have learned a lot, but not not a revolution, no. Can Amy have her own show where she gives life advice to teens? You have to ask her that. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she'd want to do that, but... Uh, Oh, has so Rogan said uh, he would try to have more virology professional points of view. Look, Le- Le- Lex Friedman, when I was there recording with Lex, Rogan called him and Lex said, You should have Vincent on the show. And he never, and this was uh, a year ago, he never did. So he's not going to. He's just saying that so that people stop criticizing him because he's getting a lot of heat, right? What does the future look like in terms of new variants? Well, you know, the future is hard to predict. But um, <laughs> Yogi Berra used to say. Um, if we have a lot of people infected, we'll have variants. Now... We have a lot of animals infected, and that could generate variants as well. You know, some people think that uh, Omicron came from mice. In fact, I had Nels Eldy on TWIV this week, and I'm trying really hard to release that, <laughs> too. And he talked about that theory. So it, it may not even matter how many people are infected. We may have more variants out of animals. I don't know. But as long as we have a lot of infections, millions and millions, we'll have variants, yeah. As you see, Omicron variants have already arisen. So that's what the future is. Only at some point when infections are severely depressed, then we'll have fewer. But you know, the common cold coronas are very good at causing infections all the time. And they they do variation, but on a slower level, they have seem to have reached some stasis. And maybe at some point, the same will happen with SARS-CoV-2, but it could take many years, right? We don't, And so I think for the immediate future, we're going to see more variants, yes. What about their properties? We have no idea what to predict. Nobody predicted Omicron. It came out of left field, right? Yeah, I find that I, now I know what Amy is not going to 
like because and also at Columbia we talk and she says you know you say these things and I don't like this so I pre I pre, pre prefix it by saying you're not going to like it I think it kind of softens the the blow so she expects something coming and she's not as harsh on me <laughs> but um yeah that's what I do It's been three months since I got my second dose of AstraZeneca. Uh, I don't know. It depends on the, the gap between your first and second dose, right? If it were close together, you should get a third dose spaced out. Are either of you aware of any planned changes by NIH and or CDC to report data differently? For example, new infections, un unvaxxed reinfections, etc.? I I totally agree that that's what we need. We need more granularity in the reporting. And Daniel said exactly this in his clinical report. I have no uh, information that that's going to change at all. Yeah, so I totally agree that new infections is not very useful. But I'm not aware of any imminent changes. Can you generate an RNAi response to an RNA vaccine? Um, I, I'm not quite sure how you mean that. Do you mean uh, make RNAi against it? Um, so, no, mammals are generally thought not to do that because we don't need RNA-based RNA, def RNA -based defenses like that because we have protein-based defenses. Now, we certainly do regulate gene expression by short interfering RNA production. Um, and those are made, they can be processed from, from pre uh, miRNAs for sure. Uh, so could you, could you make it from an mRNA vaccine? Uh, could it come, could the RNA come in and be processed? I don't see why not since uh, pre uh, miRNAs can be processed as well. That's a very good question. I have to... Where's my book? Let me just quickly look at the textbook, The Principles of Virology, 5th edition. I'm not trying to sell you this, but if you donate a 1000 or more to Microbe TV, which is tax deductible, um, I will send you a copy free, which is autographed. Uh, it's a lot of money. I know that, but I'm trying to support this company and keep it going without charging you to... Now putting ads in, for example, charging you for anything. All right, so I'm looking for uh, RNA processing and how, how a mRNA could be processed. Let me see if I can quickly find it. That would be in processing chapter. Here we go, processing. Um, so... So yes, if 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 the um, if the mRNA had the right structure, it could be processed. Yeah, but I think most likely, it, most often, it happens when RNAs are are replicating, and you have double stranded forms, which are then processed. So I think it's it's not very likely. Sorry, it took so long to to get that. Thank you, Westfield, for your contribution. As more politicians are now being caught without masks. The narrative changes to dropping mask mandates. Do you think scientifically it is time to drop mask mandates? So it's a tricky question because we've we've gone on record here saying we we think uh, that the vaccines work and we should now be getting back to to life. And people who have decided not to be vaccinated have made their choice now. Of course, that leaves kids under five and older people who have poor immune systems and immunosuppressed people still vulnerable, right? So the only reason to keep wearing them is to protect them. I think Amy would disagree with this, but I think... So, for example, I teach my class at Columbia. Everybody's wearing a mask. Why is that? We're all vaccinated. It's in case we happen to be infected and encounter someone else. But I think the likelihood of that is very low. And you know what? So this is a back to the question where we need science. How well do people transmit? 
who are vaccinated compared to unvaccinated. I think it's poor, as I've said multiple times, but we don't have the good data. We have epi data, which is not good enough. I'm sorry. I want to know a time course in a, say, household transmission and measuring infectious virus shedding, a really hard experiment to do. And people will say, you're crazy, Rack and Yellow. You can't do that. Well, it's not being done, so we're not going to have the data. I think the transmission is sufficiently dampened so that it becomes less and less likely that vaccinated people are going to transmit. Now, so that I would like to see mask mandates removed uh, because I feel vaccinated people are largely protected. They're never going to be 100% protected, but they're largely protected. But if you say, well, I have kids and old people around I want to protect, totally get it. I totally get it. So you have to take that into account. There's no ne easy answer for that. I am three times vax, tested positive on 120. I feel fine. On 2 1, I tested, rapid tested positive. No, you're not necessarily still contagious. No. I think um, you could be shedding very little virus at that point. So um, I would say, you know, just to be careful, you should wear a mask to protect other people. But again, we don't have the science to guide these decisions. So the CDC is erring on the safe side. That's the policy based on. <clears throat> How do they determine proper spacing, efficacy of tetanus or any vaccine? Well, in, in theory, you should try different spacings. Usually that's done in animals because it's very difficult to do in humans on clinical trials. And it depends what you think protects, right? If it's antibodies or T-cells, you have to figure that out. Um, and they thought that antibodies protected us against SARS-CoV-2. They still do. Um, and there's some correlative support of that, but it's not great. So that's how that would be done. Dr. Griffin is in Ghana. Yeah, he's been traveling around. Uh, I think he's at a medical school right now. This tomorrow, Friday, we are recording his, uh, his update from Ghana. It's number 100. How about that, right? <clears throat> Have any biophysicists studied viral mutations and possible non-biological factors? <clears throat> Environmental, even solar flares. No, not really. I keep hearing mutations are random, but that seems unscientific. No, it, it is known because the polymerase makes uh, random errors, okay, as it's copying. Now, there are other kinds of mutations that are not induced by the polymerase, and they're caused by modification of bases by host enzymes, changing a chemical constituent of a base in the nucleic acid, and that changes how it pairs, and that can result in mutation as well. And so those can be dependent on the host cell, actually. So um, there's an amount of randomness, and then there's an amount of um, contribution of the host cell. So it is quite scientific. Um, I, I don't think that that's an accurate statement to say it's unscientific and there certainly could be other effects but nobody has really looked at those uh, the active site in the main protease in all coronas is supposedly highly conserved will this have an impact on the development of resistance no because uh, the the protease can change outside of the active site and still give you resistance, right? So it doesn't matter. And we know this because other viral proteases have, uh, have had inhibitors developed for them and they, we get resistance. Uh, why would the shingles virus cause sudden total body hair loss? 
I, I have no idea why that would be. It's, uh, shingles is in, infecting uh, skin cells, of course, and that could be related to it. An unusual person with, with a different immune response, perhaps. Uh, but I don't know of any specific mechanism there. I understand teachers are demanding students be masked. Well, at Columbia, we have to. We don't have any choice. It's fine, but I don't <clears> – <throat> I mean, the, the students are remaining on campus for the most part. They're all vaccinated. I don't know. I think we would not need – I feel that we don't need to be masked, but that's not my decision. <laughs> would you gain any protection from drinking a 12-ounce can of the vaccine? Uh, this is a, well, for a 12-ounce can would be a lot of vaccine, right? It would be a big waste of vaccine. So the question is, could some of it be taken up uh, and uh, immunize you? Perhaps, you know, probably could in, initiate an immune response in the gut. I think it would be very inefficient because um, it's going through the stomach. It's going to be digested, right? So probably not much. Uh, not seeing much long haul COVID and Delta and Omicron variants in my groups. Any comparative data stats? The only data I've seen lately are in, are in vaccinated people, right? Where Daniel has been reporting that uh, weekly, and those have been very low. But <clears throat> uh, Delta Omicron, I haven't seen any new data, not yet. But I expect we will, right? Animals are getting COVID. Will they generate new strains? Yeah, I mean, they could. But there's, as I said before, there's a suggestion that the mouse is, mouse is the origin of Omicron, but it's by no means proven. So I think we need to do sampling of wildlife to see what's circulating there and make sure that nothing is arising that could be of concern. Now, it's what's of concern. That's the question, right? If we see something, how do we know what it means? We don't. We only see, know what it means after it's begun to spread in people. So nevertheless, I think we need to figure out what's circulating in what animals. And we don't know that enough. So Campbell has been saying people should get infected. So that's uh, irresponsible because Daniel says he's seen Omicron kill people. Okay, so don't take medical advice from him, please. Yeah, he's a he's a nurse. It's fine. He he's allowed to give some medical advice, but in terms of selling yourself to get infected, that's inappropriate. Sorry. Thank you, Origin, for your contribution. I tested positive. Well, you I've already answered your question, but thank you for the contribution. <laughs> Now, Amy just wants to run her lab. She just wants to have a lab and do experiments. I've asked her, do you want to be head of this or that? She said, no, I just want to do experiments, which is really good. Um, she is very modest, just wants to do her science, which is good. She should because she is very good at it. Both beta and Omicron may have originated in South Africa. There's high prevalence of HIV. So that's another theory uh, that uh, these variants evolved long-term in, in immunocompromised patients. And in fact, a preprint just came out from South Africa where they had a 22-year-old woman with, she'd been HIV since birth, right? She got it at birth and she was untreated. And she had, was chronically infected with Omicron. Was it Omicron? No, it was, a, it was a different virus, a different variant. And, and for nine months, and then they gave her antiretroviral therapy and that cleared, uh, that reduced uh, HIV loads and cleared SARS-CoV-2 because it restored her immune system, right? In the course of those nine months, many different variants evolved in her. Um, so, yes, it could be, that's another possibility. It's another theory for the origin in an immunosuppressed person. And yes, there are a lot of, HIV infected people in South Africa for for sure. Since the COVID tests are free, I'm tempted to order them even though I'm boosted and I feel fine. Are they worth using just out of curiosity? Well, it's always good to be curious. You could say, 
All right. Am I, <clears throat> am I, um, positive, but then what would you do? There's no, th nothing you would do. I guess you may say, oh, well, I'll stay home for five days to you know, just keep other people safe. But I would say the biggest reason is if you're curious, you want to do the test and see, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, is there any proof of indication that Omicron is less virulent? My Fox News listening friends keep telling me this. Yes, they're mixing up effects in vaccinated versus unvaccinated. You know, the early studies out of South Africa, which said, oh, it's milder, they admitted, yeah, but the study population is totally different. They're younger, they're mostly vaccinated, and they have fewer comorbidities. Um, so why did you even say that in the first place? And Daniel, on the other hand, says, all of my hospitalized patients are unvaccinated and COVID, uh, Omicron infected. And the, I don't see any mild infections with, with Omicron. Those you see in the vaccinated people. So be careful of these proclamations that it is mild. Isn't the start of symptoms from either vaccination or infection an indication of the start of clearing the infection? So if, yes, in fact, it turns out that... Um, when you get symptoms, then the, the viral titer is declining for sure. So um, the, um, and in fact, the antibody response kicks in way too late to have any effect on, on viral clearance. So I think his definition still holds. Yes, I'm, I'm not agreeing with Amy on that one. Yep. Could nanoparticles from automotive wheel traffic enter our cells through the lungs? Are there more airborne nanoparticles, and does this impact us? Well, this is not my field, but I do know that we have our fruit and vegetables are full of plastic nanoparticles, right? And I just wonder what that's doing. Like Apple has huge numbers of plastic nanoparticles from the plastic waste that is thrown out and is ground up and gets taken up into the roots of the trees. Wow. Deer and other animals are drinking from a stream where there's septic runoff. Yeah, but I think the amount of infectious virus in that is very low. You know, these are all pieces of RNA they're picking up in sewage, so I'm not worried about that. But there are other ways that deer can get infected, for sure. Absolutely. Last I heard, BA2, <clears throat> yeah, the Omicron variant was at 8%. Do you think it will grow more? In many places, it seems to be fitter than Omicron. So the problem is now that the... The wave is ending, right? So uh, if there's not an immediate one, there's nothing to displace. So, But it's also asynchronous in there in different parts of the country. So it, it could displace in areas where there's still high rates of infection, which there certainly are in some places, right? Um, I'm still confused about immune response versus disease. The, after exposure and infection, there's an initial immune response. So what is the actual pathology of the disease? So uh, the, the, um, the initial infection, upper tract, right? And um, that can be symptomatic or not. Mild symptoms, you know, sniffles, uh, stuffiness, headache, and so forth. Then uh, the virus can, depending on the, your initial response, if it, if your initial response contains the infection, then you're, you're not going to have severe disease. But in people who don't contain that initial infection, viral titers are high and it moves down into the lungs. And then your immune response over responds and that the severe disease is almost entirely driven by the immune response, inflammation, s cells, antibodies, cytokines that are produced. And so that's the lung, the serious lung pathology. There's some contribution, of course, to, by the virus killing lung cells. But the severe disease that sends you to the ICU because you can't breathe and which may kill you, that is immune-based for sure. I hope that helps. <clears throat> you met Lynn Enquist. How cool. 
uh, Arizona. So yes, I, owe a ch- I, Lynn and I are working on a chapter, and I'm woefully behind in it, and I feel very badly because, whew, um, uh, yeah, I need to finish it. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm going to finish here too late, and then I can't stay up doing that. I'm just too old to do that. All right, ten thirty. You should go a little more. Right, not not huge. Uh, Vincent, I th- no, you don't think we need it, but would an Omicron specific booster add a lot of breath? Since it's so far from the prototype, I don't know that we do because the prototype vaccine can give you great breath as it is. You don't need a booster, right? And I think that when we reset with a booster, um, then you start over with all the variants, right? Then you have a whole new series of variants um, arising. And what's the point? So the only reason you need a variant-specific booster, in my opinion, is if the percentage of severe disease hospitalization starts to rise to unacceptable levels, right? So even if it's right now 80 and 90%, that's really good. That's better than most vaccines. So I don't know, 60, 70%, that might trigger the use of a variant-specific booster just to tamp down that initial viral load. But that's going to contract. That antibody response is going to contract. You're going to get infected. You're going to generate variants. I think the key now is to try and uh, get more people vaccinated with the vaccines that we have. We don't need... Uh, I, I, we don't need a, a variant-specific um, vaccine for that um, for that reason. Would there be any circumstance that you would get a fourth dose? I would get a fourth dose only if, and I would think this would take a few years, if the rate of severe disease went into the 60s or 70, protection against severe disease went into the 60th or 70 percentile, right? Then I would consider it. Um, if there were data that showed that a fourth dose would, would protect against that. And the same with a variant-specific dose. And I want to see the data not just in the immediate months after the vaccination, but six to eight months later when the antibody levels contract. How does that do against severe disease? I don't care about high antibody levels. I want to know later when you depend on a memory response that takes a couple of days to kick in, how does that vaccine do? That's what's important. Can viruses produce proteins to make it difficult for other viruses to infect the same host? Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, they do. They, so, for example, retroviruses often display a lot of their put a lot of a certain protein in the cell that would prevent other retroviruses from getting in and infecting. So yes, it happens, and there are multiple examples of that. Have I discovered any new wines during the pandemic? Um, I, I, I have discovered... Um, I, I, actually, I, I knew these before, but I've gotten more into it. Any, any red wine from Paso Robles I find is amazing. You can't buy a cheap one. Even the cheapest ones are fantastic. Uh, And I also found a local store with a lot of great Italian reds, which are fabulous. All all different uh, kinds of grapes. Um, Really, yeah, really nice. It's a good good outcome. Is a vaccinated patient with comorbidity better protected uh, than an unvaccinated patient with the same Absolutely, yes. <laughs> There's no question about that. And the worst comorbidity is obesity. Yeah. Okay, now we are talking about Sarah Jessica Parther, Parker. Okay, thank you, Andrea, from your for your contribution. We appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit on this um, 
at Cove in, in bats. It's a MERS variant, but only detected in the lab in animals, not humans. Okay, good. That's very good. And that's good that they're scanning for it. We like that. mRNA for Lyme? Sure. <clears throat> Try it for everything. I think it... Um, it works so well, you should try it for a lot of things. It's not going to work for everything, but definitely try it for a lot of things. So the variant and never near herd immunity mean four more years. No, I don't think so. I think herd immunity means um, <clears throat> reducing transmission, reducing shedding, not zero, reducing it sufficiently so it's very le less efficient and that will impede population transmission for sure. So it's not four more years. No, I don't think so. End of 2023 is over, I think, globally. I live in American Samoa where we have no COVID. I was vaccinated a year ago. So what does that mean? Did you have two doses or what? And I would wait. If you're going to travel, then you might want to get boosted. But if you start to have community spread, then yes, get a booster. That would be a good idea. Thank you, Ian, for your contribution. <laughs> Twib donations were fraud because Ian donates so often. Thank you. And I still didn't get the thing you sent, Ian. It hasn't arrived at Columbia, just so you know. Circle back. I don't know what circle back is. Let's look it up. Circle back. Circle back. You circle back on an issue. Oh, I see. Instead of um, follow up. No, I hate circle back. I don't like that at all. No. <laughs> if you're in a COVID trial, couldn't they expose everyone and give them monoclonals for three after three days? They could, sure. But... They don't want to just study them for three days. They want to go out to 10 days or whatever. So uh, they didn't do that. Yeah. I think you once told us this of our LG Live. What is the replication rate of SARS-CoV-2? I don't. So you want to know what's the, um, the, the one-step growth curve? I think it's 24 hours, if I'm not mistaken. All right, let's uh, move down here. I know we have a lot of great questions, but we should wrap this up because it is 10.30. Kept moderators late. Uh, thank you, Michael, for your contribution. Mucosal surfaces in the nasal passage elicit a B-cell response that increase local levels of IgA. When challenged, will the U.S. do an EUA for Covaxin, a nasal vaccine that can boost this immune response. Wait a minute. Let's check on this. Let's see. <clears throat> Covaxin is, uh, is, is injected. It's not a nasal vaccine. So it, that doesn't make any sense. G-dub, thank you. If I'm double vaxxed and boosted and had Omicron, or, uh, would it fair to say that you're pretty protected? Yeah. Vaxxed, boosted, and infected, you're amazing immunity. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing immunity. That's a great combination, infected and recovered. Thanks, Doreen, for your contribution. Yes, yeah, so... A triple header Q&A with A and V and Daniel would be fabulous. Are you considering? Yes, I asked Daniel. He will do it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have to stay in New York. We'll have Daniel join. The start. We'll start an hour earlier. We'll start at 7. When he gets back from Africa, we'll do a Q&A for an hour with Daniel. Then Amy will come on. Daniel will leave. Amy will stick around for her hour, and then I'll wrap it up. Okay? We will do that. Maybe we could do more than one. So, yes, we're going to do that for sure. I'm happy to do everything I can, folks. Thank you, Mr. Ozzy Cam, for your contribution. Good to see you. Alan Dove sounds like the brainy tall penguin in Penguins of Madagascar. I'll take your word for it. I haven't heard that or haven't seen it. Thank you, Jerry, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Great chats amongst yourselves as well here. 
Um, I think that's great. I'm glad we have a little community. I think, yes, uh, Amy should go talk to Rogan. That would be fine. I totally agree with you. I've told her she should go, but she doesn't want to go. She said I should go. <clears throat> Thank you, Overjoyed, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming back and contributing every week. And I'm glad to see people still here, right? Not a thousand tonight, but still a lot. And so you are still, um, you are still uh, interested this week in public health. So, uh, as I said earlier, I wanted to, Lori Garrett to do a, you know, this week with a public health with Lori Garrett, something. So I'm working on that. Oh, I have to call her back. Okay, I will. I will do that. Thank you, Michael, for your contribution. Mexican health authorities don't plan to vaccinate those under 15. They say they're low risk. I hope they feel world pressure to do so. I don't think they're, it's not fair to say they're, they are lower risk, but they're not zero risk. And if, what if your kid dies? How would you feel about that? Because you didn't vaccinate them. I think that's horrible. You should protect them. There's no negative to protecting them. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, Jaspal, really appreciate it. All right, that seems uh, to be it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, moderators. Tom, Les, Steph, Frank, Vanity Nutrition. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, and uh, be safe, everyone. Bring your questions back next week, 8.30 uh, Eastern, so that I get home after my lecture, right? I can't um, guarantee my lectures end at 5.30, and I'm not sure I could get home in time for an 8 o'clock. So until then... 8.30, and then we'll go back to uh, 8. Uh, and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Great to see you all. And um, good night. Thank you, folks.